Hello, and welcome to our Series 2 Medium Expandable Knack Pack Review. We see a lot of hybrid backpacks on this channel, backpacks that can do two things. Most of them fail miserably, but some of them don't. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Does the Knack Pack 2 fail miserably, or is it one of the rare examples of a truly awesome hybrid backpack? You're about to find out. My name's Aaron, the wizard behind the camera is named Tab. What our powers combined, we create Nomad's Nation, the best freaking backpack review channel on the YouTube. If you dig backpacks, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. This is gonna be a long review. Grab a cup of coffee, let's get into it. Okay, let's start off our review by just talking about the overall gist of the Knack Pack Do. The unique selling point of this bag is that it's a 24 liter backpack that can expand to 35 liters. This means that it's a great everyday carry at 24 liters. You've got stuff for your everyday carry stuff, all of your little tidbits of gear. And then like your larger gear in like the everyday carry compartment, it feels great as an everyday carry. It functions incredibly well as an everyday carry. But then you're like, uh, I wanna go travel. And you just unzip and you go from 24 ooh, to 35 liters. And this extra literage gives this compartment 11 liters of space. And then you basically just have like a suitcase. Clamshell style opening and definitely enough space for two to three days minimum worth of clothes, no problemo. Let's talk about the pros and the cons of the medium expandable series from Knackpack. Pro number one, it's a hybrid between an everyday carry and a short to midterm travel pack, and they f nailed it. Pro number two has got to be the quick and seamless stowaway strap system. And pro number three, it's just, it's one for me, I gotta mention it. I, I, I love the internal colors and the pattern. It's lovely. I'm smitten by it. But we got some cons. Con number one, the sternum strap kind of sucks. Con number two is that the flimsiness of the back panel can be uh, noticeably irksome. And con number three is that when you expand from 24 liter mode to 35 liter mode, it just kind of looks a little meh. Okay, let's kick off this review by talking about the front of the Knack Pack Series 2 Medium Expandable. The materials is a 420D nylon. The texture is quite fine, but it's gonna be highly durable. And then down here we have PVC. This PVC kind of feels like the same material that would be on like overhead headphones, the part that's on your ear. So we're not sure about the durability of it, but it is smooth to the touch. It has like a leathery feel. And talking about leather, we actually have leather on the actual handles here. We tested out the actual durability of this leather by trying to scratch the shit out of it with like Tav's like knife thing. And uh, it stood up pretty well. It's high quality leather. And as any high quality leather, has a great feel to it. Now let's get into the front compartment. This is accessible through YKK lockable zips. Really smooth zipper experience as all YKK zips are. And we have an organizational mecca. This compartment has nine pockets, three pen holders, and three of whatever these things are. First thing to mention is I love what Pack did with the internal materials. Look at this colors and the patterns that they got going on here. This is definitely a unique take. And I just think it's cool. And the light colors help to give it a highlight effect, which makes it easier to find your gear. Starting on this side, we have a mesh pocket. I do not love this mesh. I'm from Florida and this reminds me of like, every house has a, has a screened in like pool and this feels like screen materials. It's hard and it's not stretchy and it's a little, it's kind of like sticky. It's just not my favorite mesh in the world. Get access with the YKK zip though. You gotta love mesh because it's see-through so you can see what you packed there. I got a few things, portable battery and a cable. And that's it for this side. Switching sides, we've got a large pocket on the bottom. Surprise, I got a book in there. I read, good. And then a lot of smaller pockets. We've got three pen pockets, one, two, three. These little guys here, I, you know, you could throw a pen in there. If you have six pens, that's great. You have a spot for each one of them. But it's also a good storage space for something smaller, like maybe a USB key. We got two pockets here, a smaller one here, and a larger one. Uh, there's not a lot of things you're gonna be able to fit in here. It's advertised that it's good for business cards. That's cool. If you travel with your business cards, you have two pockets for them. We got a pocket right here, which extends to here. We got some almonds in there. In okay, case so I get peckish. And the top pocket uses a micro fleece material. That's why I have more like fragile gear in there. Shades and my phone. The micro fleece is very nice to the touch and it'll keep your sensitive gear from getting scratched. And then the last part of this compartment is the keyring solution. Um, outside Aaron, what are your thoughts regarding this? Well, thank you, Inside Aaron, for asking. And I'll tell you, I think that the keyring solution is good in some ways, not as great in other ways. Let me show you what I mean. So 
let's pretend this is our door right here. To actually access the key ring, you gotta take the bag off. You gotta do one of these and grab it, and then you gotta kinda put the bag down. So I don't like that extra motion. That is kind of annoying, but the actual solution, the hardware, really nice feel. It's aluminum or some kind of metal. And it's easy to clip on, unlock your door, clip it back on, and then you're on with the day. Back to you in the studio, Aaron. Awesome, thank you outside, Aaron. Also, you should buy a bigger shirt. Am I right? A little too tight. Okay, so that's good, front. Done. All right, next up, let's talk about the middle, and this is where things get crazy. First up, water bottle pocket. I like zip access water bottle pockets. Then your water bottle's not flapping all over the place. Easy access. I've got an 18 ounce hydro flask. It can also fit up to a 24 ounce hydro flask. And it should be noted that in case your bottle does leak, there is no drainage hole. All right, let's get inside. Yet again, YKK lockable zippers. And this is what I refer to as the EDC compartment. Now, as to where the front compartment had a lot of features and pockets, uh, a little bit more minimalist in the EDC main compartment. Sort of a half opening here. I got a few tidbits. Uh, I got my Air Tech pouch. I got a jacket, moleskin notebook. We've got a mesh compartment here. It uses the same like, like screen mesh that I'm not crazy about. This is good for something that you need quicker access to. Because in theory, you can just unzip, grab what you need, good to go. On the other side, we have one, two, three pockets. This one's a zip pocket, runs the entire depth of the bag, so all the way down to the bottom. No other internal organization. Here we have an interesting pocket. It's like a little compartment and yet again, lined with the same microfiber that we found in the front compartment. This leads me to believe that Knack would like to see you put like a tablet here, or yet again, something that's a little bit more fragile. So phone, tablet, uh, all of which would be very well protected by this microfiber fleece material. And then moving north, we have another mesh compartment. I got my computer charger in there. That's it, at least for the EDC section. Now let's jump into the main compartment travel section. So to expand the knack pack too, you've got this little flat material. It's PVC on the bottom and then the nylon on the top. And all you do is you just go to the bottom, grab this zip and bring it all the way around. Now, if you want a seamless experience, you're gonna wanna move the flap out of the way. That's the best way. If you have the flap there, it's gonna kind of get caught a little bit, but more or less it's a pretty seamless transition. And then, ah, yeah. I've seen other packs try to do expansion uh, options like this and they failed miserably. This is one of the better ones that I have ever seen. So now we'll get into the actual main compartment itself. Clamshell style opening, pretty minimalist. This is 11 liters, so depending how you pack, you can get anywhere from a one to two day trip to a lifetime of travel. Just like I said, depends on how you pack and how much laundry you do. Let me pack it out real fast so you can get the full experience. So as you can see right here, we threw in a big ass jacket, a regular jacket, a pair of pants and a couple shirts. And we're gonna go ahead and use this compression element right here. Nice, put it into place. Nice, tight, tidy, compressed. It's really cool. And then the mesh compartment, I would recommend for like smaller bits of clothes, good for things like socks, underwear, maybe a small travel towel. So this is really what this bag is all about. We just went from everyday carry 24 liters to now I'm going to Paris for the weekend. I'm spending a week in Phuket. If you're a super, super, super heavy traveler, you're probably not gonna be able to get by on 35 liters. But for all my minimalists and one baggers out there, this thing is so cool. But one thing to note is that while I do think this pack looks pretty good, the aesthetics definitely get f***ed up a little bit when it's expanded. It just doesn't look quite as sexified. You got this gaping, gapping, gap thing right here. Definitely not a deal breaker, but it's something to keep in mind. Okay, now let's talk about the back because there's some really important to cover. First up, we have a very cool laptop solution, side access. I'm a big fan of laptop side access. Why do you ask? because you actually don't have to take your backpack off to grab your laptop. Just do one of those, pop your laptop back in. Very convenient and also very safe and secure for your laptop. There's a decent amount of padding on this side and your clothes and other things will keep it padded on the other side, but there's not much, there's not much of a false bottom. I wish that the false bottom was falser, but you're too truthy. It can fit up to a 15 inch laptop. Mine's a 13 inch MacBook Pro, so perfect fit. Moving on over here, we have a luggage pass-through holder. And then within the luggage pass-through holder, we have a little hidden pocket. This is a good spot for things like backup cash, maybe your passport, maybe your wallet, just more sensitive things that you want quick access to. Because you do get quick access to it. You're at the airport, you're going through customs, need your passport. It's, it's, it's a really good spot for a passport. 
Big fan of some things with the shoulder straps, not with other things. I like the look. They got the PVC on the top, so it's a little bit shiny here, and then a little bit more rugged down low. The straps feel comfortable, a nice amount of padding. Pretty soft, actually. A little bit of mesh for breathability. But while I like the straps themselves, I, I really don't like this sternum strap. And I feel quite strongly about it. I haven't felt so strongly about a sternum strap ever in my life. I just think this one sucks. First of all, there is an enormous excess of nylon dangle happening. There's no way to stow it. Secondly, it's like in three parts. So it you can take it off like this or you can take it off, yeah, like that. See? And then also it's just like different materials. So you have this hooking system, which has like some sort of metal material, which it works fine. But then this is plastic and then this is metal, but then this is plastic. It's, just, it's a little confusing and a little weird. And then that weirdness extends further down where we have plastic here, but metal here, but plastic here. I know this is me like really splitting the hairs, but it is kind of an inconsistent experience. I like the metal hardware. I would have liked to have seen everything be metal. And while they were trying to be innovative with the sternum strap, I think they missed the mark. So f off. But now speaking of these parts right here, let me show you how this backpack can go from backpack mode into briefcase mode. Basically, we have these little clips up here and all you do is simply unclip and stow it away in this little compartment up here. But let's do a test. Let's see how long it takes me. Tap, how long do you think it's going to take? Uh, 12 seconds. 12 seconds. All right. Two, one. 12 seconds. I'm going to get it in seven and a half. I can feel it. I can feel it. Oh, oh. oh. How fast was that? It was that fast. I don't know how fast. We'll find out in post-production. But regardless, you can see it's a really seamless experience. A lot of other backpacks try to do the whole, we can go into brief mode and some can do it successfully, but not all can do it as seamlessly as the NAC Pack 2 medium expandable can. And this mode is especially good for when you're at the airport, right? You're about to board your flight. If you're gonna put your bag overhead or you're gonna put it under the seat in front of you, this just helps create less dangle, less drag. It's a more seamless travel experience. It's definitely a backpack first and a briefcase way second Second, but it's just a nice option to have. But is it actually good in briefcase mode? Let's go to our man in the field, outside Aaron. Tell us what you think. You know, when you're in 24 liter mode, briefcase mode, it's actually pretty awesome. But on the other hand, when you're in 35 liter mode, it's a little bit more awkward. Thanks, dude. And the last point I want to talk about with the back is this back panel. We've got some molding going on here. It's three dimensional. So that means it creates a little bit extra ventilation for your back. My only criticism though, is that it's a little flimsy. See that flimsiness right there. And sometimes when I was wearing it, I could just sense the flimsiness. I just usually prefer like a nice, like tight, solid back panel. Uh, it's definitely, again, not a deal breaker, but it's noticeable. All right, now I'm going to tell you who I think this pack is for and who it's not for. But if it's not for you, I'll be sure to give you an alternative recommendation. It should be pretty obvious. This pack is for you if you're looking for a badass hybrid between an everyday carry backpack and a mid-sized travel pack. I don't think there's a backpack that does it as well as the NAC Pack 2. If that sounds like you, you're gonna make a purchase, we do ask that you use the first link in the description. That link makes sure that you get the best price, but it also helps to support our channel. Thank you. This bag is also 110% for you if you're looking for that one bag lifestyle. Think about it, you're going to Lima for the weekend. You're gonna try some of that world-class ceviche. You load this bad boy up with your clothes, get to your Airbnb, dump your clothes out, you say adios ropas, is that clothes in Spanish? Compress to 24 liters, kaboom, you got a day pack. That is one bag minimalist travel at its absolute finest. If that sounds like you and you're gonna make a purchase, please use the first link in the description. Thank you. This is also a really good pack for you if you're looking for a 24-ish liter everyday carry, but some days you just need a little bit extra space. Maybe you're a college student and you need like a little bit extra space for your art project. Or maybe you're a digital nomad and some days you just want to bring a ton of your DN gear. Or maybe you just want the option to stop at the grocery store, expand and fit like some groceries in here. Whatever it is, if you just want that versatility in your everyday carry experience, this guy's pretty stellar. If you make a purchase, please use the first link in the description. But on the flip side, this bag is not for everyone. I don't think this is gonna be the bag for you if you're just looking for a small everyday carry. If you don't need the expansion, why pay for it? If you are on the hunt for an everyday carry, check the description below. Down there, you will find a link to our roundup of the seven best everyday carry backpacks. 
This also might not be the bag for you. If you're like, oh, I love this. I want the everyday carry that can go into like a travel pack, but you're like a digital nomad or a business traveler. If that sounds like you, I think that there's a better alternative and you can find a review to that alternative in the links below. This also might not be the pack for you if you're like, I'm really into the whole expansion thing, but I don't need a 24 liter, I need a bigger travel pack. If that sounds like you, take a look at the description. I've got a link to a larger travel pack that can expand from 35 to 45 liters. And I think you'll love it. Woo, all right. Okay, thank you so much for sticking around to the end of this long ass review. If you found this review useful, the best way to support our channel is to hit the like button, subscribe, and to comment below. What do you think? Is this the ultimate one bag travel pack? Or do you need a little bit larger than 35 liters? Also, if you own this pack, let me know what don't you like about it? It's pretty obvious that we like this pack. We had a hard time finding things we don't like. So let us know in the comments if anything that you've picked out over the months or years that you've used it that you think just kind of sucks. We would love to hear from you. Thank you so much, guys. We'll see you next time.